Welcome to Auto Instruct. In today's video, we're going to show you how to set up your OBD11 device and get you started with basic programming and diagnostics. So first of all, you want to plug your OBD11 into your OBD2 port, which is located under your steering wheel, uh, down where the feet are, and turn your ignition on. You don't need to start the vehicle, but please keep in mind um, your battery voltage will drop. So first of all, you need to go into the Bluetooth settings and pair the OBD11 device. Now we've already done that and the passcode is 1234 when prompted. And now we can simply open up the OBD11 app. It'll ask you to set up an account, so please do so. And then it'll launch you into the splash screen here where we connect to the vehicle. So once you've tapped connect, you need to wait about 10 seconds for it to connect to the OBD11 and your vehicle. And once it's done, it will load up your vehicle. Um, and in my case, it's a Mark 7 Golf R. And so now it's connected. So in the top left menu, we'll show you the, uh, the basics of the app. So if you click on your name, you can see your credits, um, your account, and stuff like that. You go back and go to My Car. It shows you all the details about your car. So info will show you your VIN, mileage, things like that. History will show you your programming history, which is great to look back and see um, what things you would have changed, as you can see here. If we go back again, now, apps is a great feature from OBD11, which um, other areas like VCDS lack. And this is actually a one-touch way of uh, programming your vehicle. So with the cost of some sh credits, um, we can change all of these settings in one touch rather than going into multiple modules in long and short coding and changing settings in your vehicle. So for example, we can turn ECL, ECS permanently off with one touch. Um, at the cost of, once it loads up, of um, 10 credits, for example. And there's plenty of options, and the guys at OBD11 are constantly adding new ones in um, as they find them and set them up. Alternatively, if you don't want to spend credits um, doing one-touch coding, you can do it manually, and we'll show you that later on. So just go back. Live data is pretty obvious, that's the live data of the vehicle. And there is a lot of stuff in here, as you can see. And for example, if we click on something like intake air temperature, we can see the value at the top here, flicking between 20 and 21 degrees Celsius. And you can change this between Celsius and Imperial, obviously. Um, and there is lots and lots of information here. So there's plenty there to look through. Just go back again. And that's the basics of um, the upper menu. Now, once we get back to home, we're at the page where it says scan. Now, scanning um, initiates a scan of the vehicle, which I'll do now. And it goes through all your modules in this Golf, there's 19 of them, and checks a whole variety of things looking for um, error codes. Now, many of these error codes um, won't actually result in engine light that you can see on the dashboard, but there's lots of hidden errors in the background that are logged. Um, and some of them are quite obscure and it's just part of um, running the vehicle. Whilst this scan's happening, you will sometimes hear noises from the vehicle. Um, you might hear them as it's going through, especially the headlight um, diagnostics, where it's actually moving the motors and the headlights. And the speaker diagnostics also um, results in a small high-pitched sound. So I'll wait for this scan to slowly run through all the modules, which does take a little bit of time. So just sit tight and wait for the scans to complete. Alrighty, now that all those scans have completed after a couple of minutes, it's telling me that I've got four faulty control units, which is quite normal, so don't stress. So if you tap on the problems down the bottom, my apologies, if you tap on the four faulty control units, um, the red markers mean there's faults. So if I go to ECM, so engine control, and tap on faults. It would tell me that's come up with um, these faults at some point in time. Now this vehicle does have a few modifications to it. Um, so some of these faults I'm not too concerned about. So I'll give you the code and tell you um, what has caused it. Now if I go back to another module, for example central electrics, Current defaults, um, anti-theft alarm activation. 
So this is telling me that the car alarm itself has actually gone off at some point. Now, I did actually do this myself, um, would have been about a month ago now, just to test out the alarm system. So it's actually gone ahead and logged that, which is pretty cool to see. Um, in some cases, it will tell you actually the the engine um, RPM and the speed and things like that when it logs a fault. Um, in this case, it won't, obviously. And sometimes it takes a little while just to load up the fault itself as it pulls it down from the modules. So just heading back, um, anything else we had in here? Gateway, faults, static current too high. I mean, that could literally be anything under the sun. Um, these vehicles are literally computers and they will track anything and everything. So I wouldn't be concerned about most things you would see in here. Um, one last one. So at some point the um, head unit has a, a local data, so a canvas um, issue with no communications. Why? Who knows? So there's plenty of things in there, but it does help with um, little fault finding and little persistent issues. Um, and that's what makes you know European cars so good. So we'll just go ahead and um, clear these faults by pressing and holding the bin. And we'll run through and clear the faults from all four modules. So once those faults are all cleared, we've now got zero faulty control units, which is good. And that does take a couple of minutes, so please bear with it. Um, it is running in the background, it just does take some time. So we'll just go back now um, and we'll just reconnect to the vehicle. And now we'll run you through um, the different modules in the vehicle and how you can do long coding, short coding. Uh, we will have a list on the website um, where we have all the known coding and adaptions you can do to the vehicle. So if you hit the three uh, white lines in the blue circle, it'll bring up all the modules. Um, yeah, we will have an area on the website where we'll show you all the list of known um, adaptions. So you can go ahead in there and start changing stuff yourself. Now this is obviously the alternative to purchasing um, the, pre the apps with credits. Uh, this is the manual way of doing it. It does take some time and you obviously do have a chance of um, getting it wrong. However, it is of course free. So starting in the ECM, so the engine control module, each module will open up and effectively give you a list of different um, things about the, uh, the module. So first of all, we can just go into info. We can see, you know, what it is, hardware numbers, things like that. And in coding is where you effectively find the long coding. So this is effectively binary based, so ones and zeros. When it does load, um, you will can go into here and change values, effectively ticking the box um, to alter um, vehicle parameters. So you tick the box like so, and then hit save by hitting the tick button down the bottom. Now I'm not going to change anything right now, uh, but our guides on the website which are written up will show you exactly where to go to change these settings. Now in adaptions, this is kind of the easiest side of um, coding, where it's actually um, a known adaption that you can change, so it's kind of like a, a yes-no to change something. So in this case at the top you can see activation of start-stop. So I can click on that and right now it says it's active. So I can tap on that and go not active, OK, hit the tick and that will therefore disable start-stop. So it really depends on the uh, on the alteration and program you're trying to do. The more complex stuff requires a long coding which is um, heading into the ones and zeros and binary effectively to alter stuff. But then also there's a lot of stuff in the ad adaptions, um, which is a lot easier to find and use. Um, sorry, adaptations is what I should be saying there. Um, and you can also go into things like output tests, security access and stuff like that. Security access will ask you for a login. Um, this is sometimes required when doing programming and adaptations. Uh, we'll put all these details on the website so you can go ahead and enter it and um, go ahead and make those changes. So one setting that a lot of people like to change is to disable the sound actor, or in this case, the actuator for structure-borne sound. So I can go into this module. Um, each little area of car is kind of a different module. So the, you know, there's the engine module, there's this actuator module, there's a dashboard module, things like that. I can go into adap um, adaptations. Once it loads, I can go volume for structure-borne noise in actuator. 
and I've dropped that all the way down to zero percent because um, it's a fake sound and a lot of people don't like it. So in here you can actually change the volume, you know, if you want to bring it down just a little bit because it's too loud and you like a little bit of um, resonance, you can change it to something like 10%. So we'll exit back out of here. And um, that's effectively the basics of the OBD11 app and here you can go in and program your vehicle and look at diagnostics. Thanks for watching today's auto instruct video on how to set up and use your OBD11 for vehicle diagnostics and programming. Uh, a full list of programming options will be found on our website. Um, we'll be continuously compiling this list as we find new things on the internet. So please uh, bookmark it and keep an eye on it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. Thanks for watching.